Okay, so I was having this problem on my Atari 2600 where it was working and then one day I kind of it was in I had it in storage and then I dug it out for uh, another project I was working on and it didn't work. And I, I did some research on the internet to try to figure out, you know, what kind of troubleshooting that I could do before uh, giving up on, on the unit. And what I found out was that on the Atari 2600 motherboard, there are these three chips. This is the TIA, the Television Interface Adapter. This is the CPU, and this is what they call the Riot chip. And I tried popping these out and reseeding them using a chip extractor and that did not fix my problem I then proceeded to continue to try other steps to figure out which which uh, chips were bad and what I did is I took a working 2600 and I'm not sure I can recommend that to people but I took a working one and then I popped these out and swapped them until I found out which chip was was the one that was the culprit turns out that it's this riot chip at the top you can learn more about all of these chips over on the Atari Compendium website. And there's a ton of resources on the internet that describe, that describe all of these chips and what they do. Since I'm not that much of a hardware person, I thought these two websites, the Atari Compendium and the Wikipedia website covering the Riot chip, would be a great place to start learning about the Atari 2600 hardware. I also love the fact that this repair can be done without any soldering. So the first step, the first step what we have to do, now I've already determined what the problem is, it's this riot chip on both, on both of these. And so what we have to do is just open this thing up. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the, what, what the unit's doing right now when we power it on. And then we'll come back and we'll dissect it. All right, this is the before video. I'm about to power on the Atari 2600 and see what we get. And see, all we get is a black screen with a blue line going down the left. All right, now let's go ahead and take, take apart the unit and get into the motherboard. This is the part I struggle with getting this out. All right, the chips in question are underneath this shielding right here. It's real fairly easy to get into that with a needle nose set of needle nose pliers and just bend these pins back straight. straight otherwise it won't come out Now, if this will stay, it's not in the way, but, but yeah, so. All right, so what we're gonna do is pop out that riot chip, which is the top one. And you can use a chip extractor, such as this, or a small screwdriver on both sides. Um, I like to try to get used to using these, these chip extractors. Just got to do it carefully. So you don't bend the pins. This is what I've received from Best Electronics. 
the right, I bought two of them because I have two units that are needing repair with the same problem. And see that little notch on the right side? It's hard to see. See if I can't. There's a little bit of a notch right there. That's the side. That's how you know. That's that's how you know it goes onto the right side. What I try to do is I, I try to line up the pins on the back side of the circuit. And push it in. Let's see if I got that. I want to make sure it's nice and snug. Okay. Now let's go, before I button this up, let's go test it out. Plug in the RF, make sure the power is set to off. And let's go, time for the moment of truth. All right, before I button this up, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. The power is off. I've plugged in the RF into the back of the TV and I'm gonna plug the power in right now. Oops. And then I'm going to plug in Berserk. And this is the moment of truth. I'm going to power it on. Okay. And I just got to do a few tests and make sure it looks good. But at least now it is functioning. And... That was the reason why I purchased the Riot chip. Okay, now we know that the, the Riot chip has fixed the problem. I'm gonna go ahead and take the steps to button this thing up. Basically, you just do everything in the reverse order. So I'm gonna put the shielding back on. I've left the bottom shield on. And so we just gotta line this back up through the grooves, which can be tricky because these aren't exactly straight. There. And then bend them back so it, it's not loose. Bend all the cables back. The little so I'll see if I can zoom in on this one. Okay. Make sure to put the RF shielding, the RF cable back in. Now, most Atari 2600s, you have a little round uh, cushion thing that goes on all of these. This one does not have that. All right, so let's put the top, let's put this unit back together. I like to try to line up the switches. And get that top part in and hold the switch like this and then just set it in. And then once it's in like that, just put the, the screws back in on the back. Okay, and then once it's all back together, probably a good idea to go ahead and test it out again. Make sure it works, which I'm gonna do now. Okay, so this was a fun little project you can do. Um, the, uh, you can purchase the chips for the Atari 2600 over at Best Electronics. It's not the same problem in, in every hardware situation, but I just happen to have two motherboards that have the same exact issue with the Riot chips out on both of them. And uh, now it's repaired, so. One thing I wanted to mention, this is my spare motherboard, which I have replaced now the Riot chip and put the shielding back on. Uh, this little dial down here, you can adjust that, and I, I discovered that that adjusts the color 
it, it makes a big difference on the color when you twist it a little bit. So that's a way to experiment with getting a, a brighter picture or, or a different look. So just wanted to point that out. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.